Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about our beautiful neighbor Venus. This is what it kind of looks like in Space Engine and it sort of represents what it really looks like in real life as well. Today we'll talk about the discovery coming from Venus that suggests that Venus has really interesting climate and also climatic changes that we really didn't know existed. Let's talk about this and welcome to Adam Matt. <laughs> So this beautiful terrestrial planet is actually the closest planet to us, not Mars. At its closest, Venus approaches Earth at a distance of about 38 million kilometers, which is uh, relatively close when it comes to planetary distances. But today our interest in Venus is in regards to its past, specifically in regards to its changes um, related to the so-called greenhouse effect. We believe that Venus has undergone a dramatic change in its past, going from, well, basically something that looked more like Earth with liquid water on the surface, to a tremendously hot, hellish conditions with very inhospitable surface, equivalent to, I guess, what you would literally call hell. The temperatures here are close to 500 degrees Celsius, the pressures are ridiculous, the atmosphere is also full of acidic um, elements, and so most of the probes that were sent here didn't really survive for very long. The only pictures of the surface uh, that we do have um, all came from the Soviet missions back in the 70s. The so-called Venera missions uh, were able to survive on the surface for just enough time to take a few shots and were then most likely completely destroyed by the super high pressure and of course the temperature. And although the photos that we have are not super detailed, they do give you an idea of what it's like on the surface. Now, if you'd like to explore these photos, I'm posting the link uh, for this website that was created by Don Mitchell uh, quite a while ago, over a decade ago actually, and he does have these really well reconstructed photos from the Soviet mission. But even though one day we would like to go back to Venus and possibly take a few more shots of the surface, it's really the atmosphere of Venus that's the most interesting part to us right now. And more specifically, this composite shot right here taken by the Japanese Akatsuki mission gives you an idea that there is something happening in the atmosphere of Venus that um, we can't really explain just yet. There are these dark patches pretty much everywhere. And these dark patches are not really simply just clouds or any other formations that are easy to explain, they do have properties that um, we've only observed in some features on Earth. Specifically, they seem to actually uh, change the ultraviolet absorption of the planet. In other words, some of these dark patches in the atmosphere of Venus, as they travel around the atmosphere, they either increase or decrease the UV light absorption. And this does influence the atmosphere quite a lot. Now, one thing you need to know about Venus, and here's maybe a slightly better view of this, um, you can't really see its surface. Uh, pretty much about 90% of all of the light that comes to Venus is reflected. It has a very high albedo, and the word albedo refers to the reflectivity of an object. So obviously things like mirrors, for example, have very high albedo, whereas things like black roads will have very low albedo. And the albedo of Venus is so high uh, that if we were to make it similar to albedo of Earth, the temperature on the planet would jump dramatically. So right now the temperature is shown at 475 degrees Celsius, and just for fun, let's actually decrease the albedo to what it is on Earth, which is roughly around 35%. And look what happens to the actual planet. It becomes a lava world. It literally lights up, it melts, everything becomes ridiculously hot. And so the atmosphere itself, even though the planet is already super hot, and even though the greenhouse effect influenced the temperature on the surface, still kind of protects the rest of Venus from becoming a completely molten world. So this is why, for us, it's interesting to find out what's really happening in the atmosphere. And since 2007, we've been actively um, studying the atmosphere and discovered that the reflectivity of this planet is correlated with the number of these unusual dark patches. And we're still not really sure what they are. The scientists currently refer to them as unknown absorbers. And the explanation differs from them being some sort of particles, some sort of aerosols, possibly something related to oxides of sulfur, or maybe some kind of a ferric chloride, or essentially something that can influence the absorption of ultraviolet light. But late Carl Sagan even suggested that there are some similarities to bacteria living in the atmosphere of our own planet, 
that seem to actually have very similar features. In other words, he even suggested that this could be signs of life in Venusian atmosphere, simply because of the properties we were observing. But what is really unusual is that um, as these patches were changing, so was the absorption of the ultraviolet light. As a matter of fact, since 2007, the absorption of UV light on Venus halved, but then it started going up again. And so that's exactly what this recent paper talks about. What they did is analyze the data from these different missions and discovered that the changes in the dark patches in the Venusian atmosphere were correlated with the changes um, or actually heating of the atmospheric layers and thus uh, most likely the increase of the wind speed. And the winds on, on Venus are already really fast. Uh, the speeds here can reach up to about 300 kilometers per, per hour. And this is due to a phenomenon known as super rotation, where even though the planet doesn't spin, the winds above it rotate or technically move really, really, really fast. And today, or at least now because of this paper, we believe that all of this is related. So these patches, wherever they are, whatever is in them, are causing the planet to um, drop its albedo and then absorb more uh, light, specifically UV light from the sun, which heats up the atmosphere, accelerates the winds and creates, I guess, in a sense, summer. So technically the conditions in Venusian atmosphere change very periodically. And according to the observations from this paper, these changes happen roughly around every decade or around 12 years or so. And so this suggests to us that Venus has these climatic changes every 12 years, which we have never uh, known existed and which we couldn't really explain before. But this of course creates a lot more questions than answers. And it's of course interesting that these dark patches relate to all of this, but what are the patches? What are they made out of? And this of course means that we need to go to Venus, we need to find a way to explore the atmosphere of Venus and potentially find a way to launch some sort of an atmospheric probe that can study this in a little bit more detail and maybe discover if it's life or not. And this is really the important part, because if it is life living in those atmospheric layers on Venus, this would mean that life can survive much more inhospitable environments than we imagined. So here, even though the surface is ridiculously hot and extremely um, difficult to survive for anything really, the atmosphere, however, might have something for us to look into. And specifically, there are layers in Venusian atmosphere where the atmosphere itself and also the temperature is somewhat similar to what we have right here on Earth. Although not entirely chemically similar to what we have on Earth, because there are also things like acids and, um, of course, a lot of CO2 and absolutely no oxygen in those layers. Nevertheless, they could create conditions for atmospheric or aerial life. But what's even more unusual about this particular discovery is that the variation in climate that we've observed on Venus seem to be dramatically stronger than they are on Earth. In other words, not only does Venus have an extremely powerful greenhouse effect, it also seems to have very powerful climatic changes, with temperatures very likely changing by a huge amount. Every single, I guess you could call it winter, even though it's still hot, it's maybe not as hot as every summer. And this is of course not including things like storms or I guess the gushes of wind that are present in the upper atmosphere of the planet that are already really strong, stronger than pretty much anything we have on Earth. But what I find really intriguing in this discovery is the importance of albedo. Just to show you again, remember the um, albedo value for Venus is basically the highest of all planets in the solar system, it's at 90%. And this study really underlines how essential albedo studies are to discovery of new planets that are potentially habitable, to also analyzing atmospheres and analyzing atmospheric conditions. Because here, as soon as I change albedo by about 10%, the temperature of the planet changes so much that a lot of the atmosphere disappears and you can actually peer through the atmosphere. And this shows you the power of this property that's very rarely talked about. So here the temperature jumped by about 100 degrees when I changed the albedo by only 10%. So the reflectivity of objects um, is an important study. This is how we usually study the properties of objects that are far away. But it's even more important to study around objects like Venus because obviously here, since 90% of light is reflected, even a tiny, tiny deviation from that makes the planet dramatically hotter. 
And since we're not entirely sure what really caused all of this and what's causing the changes in these unusual particles or basically reflectivity of the planet, trying to identify the source is very, very important. There are suggestions that maybe it's because of the cosmic rays, maybe the actual cosmic radiation or um, the activity of the sun itself causes the changes in reflectivity of Venus. In that case, well, it's a lot easier to understand and a lot easier to simulate. But right now, the changes we've detected are not really connected to the so-called solar cycle. By the way, you can check out a video about solar cycles right there above my head. It's a very recent study that analyzes them in more detail. But either way, a very exciting study and hopefully this will help us launch a mission to Venus soon so we can explore this planet a little bit more. Unfortunately, there hasn't been a lot of talk about Venus and um, there really haven't been that many missions to Venus. The major missions all happened back in the 70s when the Soviets uh, went there, but since then no one really came. But still, studying what happened to this planet and also understanding its climate is super important so we can actually prevent this on Earth. We don't want Earth to turn like this. And we know Venus used to be very Earth-like before. So let's hope we can learn some lessons from Venus so we can preserve our planet as it is right now. Anyway, check out the paper in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, and share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.